What's good? We're back in this thing. Today, I'm going to be going over this pretty clean transition that I came up with in Premiere Pro only. It's relatively easy to do, and I really like the transition and how it came out. There's a lot of different things you can tweak with it to make it unique and have your own style to it. So that's what we're going to be going over today. If you're new here, what's good? My name is Brian. I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, be sure to like, comment, follow me on all social medias, all that stuff. But let's get into the video and break down this transition. All right, so now that we're in Premiere, I just want to show you the effect real quick. It's pretty simple. It's just like some still images stacking on top of each other. Like this. It's just another way that you can use stills or images from your music video. It just adds a little bit of texture to your music video and uh, it's just a nice transition, honestly. It's nothing super flashy, but you can kind of copy it throughout your whole music video. So I think it's it serves as one of those clean transitions that you can do throughout and it's not going to really ever take away from your music video, but it's going to add a lot of like, and it's going to make it just a little bit more interesting to watch. So first off, what you're going to want is just a few screenshots or a few images that you have from your music video. So if you took some behind the scenes photos and you wanted to use that, you could totally do that. If you just have some music video footage, I would just go through, find some cool shots that you think look cool and unique, and then go over here to the export frame as you can hold control shift E to bring it up. And then I would just name these like one through three or whatever, how many, however many you want. So let's name this four because I already have one through three selected. And then just make sure you save it to the path or whatever your music video files are stored. And then make sure it also has import into project on and then click OK. And then do that for as many or as little pictures as you want in your music video. Basically, whatever you want to have like pop up here and like freeze. So just find a few that you think look good. You can see how I have this watch pop up here the money over here. And then I just took the still from this scene right here. So it kind of just like lays over like that. Anyways, let's find a spot where we want to transition. I'll do something different from the one I did in the example. Let's find it right here and I'm going to cut it. And then let's bring in some images. Like I said, let's bring in, let's start off with this one. I'm going to drag this out and then we're going to go one, two, three frames. You can have it last however long. I just think three personally looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, drag that one out as well and then drag our last frame in here. You can just keep going three frames at a time. You can do four. It doesn't matter how long you have in between. It's basically just how long that image is gonna be showing up. I think like anywhere from like one to like five is pretty good. After that, it just gets a little bit long and uh, just seems a little stagnant. We could just go one, two, three, highlight all of these and then have it cut. So this is how fast the transition is gonna be. Just like that. Obviously, we're going to add those paper textures and have it like rip in half and, and the tape elements, all that stuff in a second. Now you have a general idea of what your transition is going to look like. Now, this is where you're going to want some kind of paper textures. I have two ultimate texture bundles on my website has a bunch of paper textures, paper rips and folds, a whole bunch of different tapes, all all different colors and styles. I made this pack as useful as possible. I have so many different tutorials on the V1 and the V2 together. Uh, they've been used in a bunch of different music videos and everything. So if you're interested, you could go to my website, briandelmata.com. And if you click shop now, it'll bring you to the V2 and the V1. You can see which either of them have to offer. If you want all the paper textures and everything, you can get both of them together. And if you use the code RIP at checkout, I'll give you a special discount code just for making it this far into the video. The footage we're actually using for this example, the texture pack was actually used in this music video, the Meek Mill sharing locations here. We also got it used in the Polo G No Return with Kid Leroy and Lil Durk, just a bunch of music videos in general. It's so cool to see it be used because it's used so many different ways in all these different music videos. And I have tutorials on almost every single one of these music videos. So if you're interested in learning how they did some of the effects in there, go check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. But yeah, go snag one of the texture bundles. I'll have it linked in the description. Be sure to use that code RIP at checkout to save yourself a little bit of money. Appreciate it. It's the best way to support the channel. And I have so many tutorials on it. You'll definitely get your value out of it. So now all you have to do is just go through all of the paper textures and decide ones that you think look cool. We'll just random Randomly drag in a few. Let's use this black sheet 37 here. I'm going to drag up the other screenshots for a second. So we just have the fourth one laying over this clip and let's go and drag this all the way to the end, just like that. And I'm going to right click and scale the frame size. And the reason we have to do that is because the texture pack is in 4k. So it's really high resolution and the files we're editing on is 1080p. So then what I do is I just want to maybe scale it up a little bit and let's find, we'll have it start off on the left-hand side like this because we we don't really care about all this stuff on the right hand side. So if you turn your blending mode on the paper texture to screen, you can see we'll, we'll have it show. So this part right here will be cut off. I think that looks good. Let's see, we can maybe have it right there and let's scale it up a little bit more. And if you want to like tweak anything, you can click on the motion up here and then you'll be able to rotate and scale it and drag. So you could have it really pop up however, like you can use the same concept and do something like that. And then you'll just have to stack differently. All different things you can do with the pack. I kind of just want to show you the concept of doing this in just Premiere. It's really easy to do. I know a lot of people watch the Photoshop tutorials on the texture pack. It's a little bit more complicated for the average person. So that's the reason I'm making this is because it's pretty damn simple to do. And then if you hold Alt on your keyboard and drag up on that black rip, 
or your paper texture layer, it will duplicate it. You'll see the paper texture gets really, really blown out here. That's fine. We're going to fix that in a second. And what you want to now do is go to effects and type in track mat and you'll see track mat key come up and drag that on your screenshot layer. So the layer of Dirk here, then go to effects. And before we do anything, actually, let's highlight all the layers, the screenshots and the paper textures, right click on it and go to nest. It's just going to make it a little bit more simple. So we can name this transition and then go inside that. I just personally think it makes it a little bit easier on the eyes and your timeline. So let's do that before we start messing around. And now we can go to that layer four or our screenshot layer and go to mat. And what you want to do is you want to put the mat and you want to go to the mat option and it says none. And then you want to go to the video layer right above the video layer. So if you want to know what video layer you're on, you can see the PNG four or the screenshot of Dirk is on video layer two. You can see that by going to the left and seeing V2. So we want it to be on the layer just above. So V3 so or video layer three. So let's go to video three. Now you can see it does exactly what we want. It removed that super blown out look and it also removed here. So now if we go back into our timeline, you can see the video is playing behind it and everything is looking really good. Now, if you wanted to add some tape or anything extra, you can always do that and just go into the pack, snag yourself a piece of tape that you think looks good. Let's just drag in this blue tape 13, drag this up here. I'm gonna right click and scale it to frame size again. And then I'm gonna go to effects controls and I'm gonna click motion so we can kind of move it around a little bit easier. Maybe we want it a little smaller and, and then let's rotate it a little bit or something. Actually, yeah, let's have it up in this top corner, just however you want. That looks good for right now. And then what I do is I drag that next screenshot to wherever following video layer is. So here we have the screenshot, the two paper textures, and then the tape. So now if we go three frames to the right, we have this screenshot of little baby's wrist. And now let's find a new texture that we want to use. So again, going back into the paper texture bundle, you can choose any of these. They're all going to work the same. Just basically whatever you think looks good. Let's try like some crazy grid one. I feel like we haven't used any grids in any tutorials recently. So let's drag that in and then right click and scale the frame size again. And then let's turn it to screen so we can see what we're working with and scale it up just a bit. And let's drag it over to his wrist. Actually, let's since it doesn't really matter, let's bring this all the way over here. I'm just moving the position of the screenshot itself all the way to the right and we can also move the paper texture to the right a lot then because we want it to cut out kind of like right here we just want it to be focused on the wrist and let's make it rotate a little bit too i don't want the the grid to be directly like up and down i think it just looks better this way and then again holding alt on that rip so there's two of them and then we just need to drag that track mat effect back onto our screenshot right onto that screenshot layer and now you can see we don't do video layer three anymore we do the layer right above the screenshot so we have so we're on video layer six if you click like the area, the black area in between this and the screenshot, it makes it way easier to track over to the left. So you can see we're on video layer six is the layer with the screenshot. So the paper texture above is actually on video layer seven. So we're going to go to that track mat and go to video layer seven. And you might see it be a little messed up. And that's just something that track mat does when you move the screenshot itself over. So you just want to go to the texture above it, above the screenshot, and then move it whatever way you did. So we need to move it to the left a little bit and just basically have it line up. Make sure you not you don't have it overlay or anything. So there we go, it fills it back out. And then if you wanted to add any tape on, let's go ahead and do that real quick, just something really simple. I like this effect because you can do it really quickly and once you have it done once, you can like copy and paste it. And I'll show you that in a second, how you can just use it throughout the whole entire music video pretty easily. So let's go and drag in one of our tape assets, scale it to frame size and I'm actually gonna scale it down a little bit more. It's not even really something you're gonna notice. It just adds a little bit extra depth to it. And the people that are watching the video for the effects and stuff will notice it. So it's nice. It's a nice little touch. And then let's find one last texture. Let's do something. We want it to be on this side. So we're just trying to figure out what would look good. I would just look at the textures and kind of see what's going on. Let's do, let's do black rip 15. I think that'll look cool. So then drag our screenshot down, our paper texture above that and drag it out all the way. Scale to the frame size turn it to screen and then we're going to move it to the left. I'm going to rotate it just a touch and we can go to the motion to do that to make it a little bit easier and just get the majority of the money in there. Once you find the spot you want, you can go ahead and duplicate that texture again. And then all we're going to need to do is add that track map back on. And since we're working on video layer 10, the texture right above it on video layer 11 is what we want to turn the track mat to. So let's go and add video layer 11 on. Now you can see there's a little bit of gap in between and that's 
it's kind of what I wanted, honestly. So that looks good to me. And if we want to, we can add one last tape on. Why not? I don't know. For some reason, I really like masking. So let's do masking and just drag on a random one that we think looks good. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We can click the motion thing just like last time. And let's find some spot that we think looks good. Let's just put it up here. Now, one thing I would do just to make it have a little bit more depth and like a little bit more like lively and like 3D, I'm going to go to effects and type in drop shadow. And if you drag that onto each one of the screenshot layers so the layer of the actual image itself go to effects controls i turn the opacity all the way up the distance down and then the softness just a little bit up most of the time like under 100 so now when you go outside of the layer you can see there's that drop shadow and if we copy and paste that to all the images you'll be able to see it here now that it has a background and let's do it to the last image that way it just has a little bit of that depth you can see there's like depth between the background you can see it even masked out like this rip area that's why i like doing it in premiere like this it's super simple like and it just applies itself to the paper texture really easily so now when we play that you can see we just have this really quick transition and honestly i might have the background pop back up right here so if you wanted to do that the background layer would just be this layer right here so we can drag all these and move it like that there's so many different ways you can use this now you can see the video layer is playing in the background and the screenshot and if you really wanted to you can just have them pop out at different times so something like that just to like offset the transition a little bit and now they kind of like yeah go like that it's just the little things that you can do to make it look a little bit more unique and if you wanted to you could even like move the whole nested sequence so you could scale go a few frames forward and scale it up throughout the whole transition i'm just going to drag it to the end and now when you play it you can see it moves a little bit it might that might be a little bit too much movement for me i did do a lot let's do something like 105 maybe There's always stuff you can tweak and change. I'm going to go back in here and we can drag out that last screenshot just to last a little bit longer, like one, two, three, just so the offset of like how they pop out is different. So now when we render this out, you'll be able to see that they come in and leave at different times. Now you can always change the timing or whatever. I just wanted to show you how you can easily apply these paper textures and use them as a transition in your music video. Like always, guys, if you made it all the way to the end, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. If you're not following me on social medias, be sure to do that. I'll have them linked down below. If you wanted to snag the paper texture pack that we use in this video and support the channel at the same time, I'll have my website linked in the description. Use the code RIP at checkout for a little secret discount. And uh hope you guys enjoyed, but that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.